In this video, we want to prove this equation y squared equals 11x plus 10 has no integer solutions. There's a fairly simple way to do this, but it relies on a not so simple theorem. Uh, so let's firstly recognize what this equation is saying. Uh, this is saying that we have some square number that is uh, 10 more than a multiple of 11. So it's saying if I divide, if I divide a square uh, by 11, uh, I get a remainder of 10. I get a remainder of 10. Okay. The reason I state it like that is because it sort of leads into the exploration of dividing square numbers by 11. I want to look at the remainders I get when I divide square numbers by 11. So I'm going to draw up a table. And now I want to divide these square numbers by 11 and look at the remainder. So let's write in this column the remainder when we divide n squared by 11. Starting at 1, 1 divided by 11 is 0 remainder 1. 4 divided by 11 is 0 remainder 4. 9 will have a remainder of 9. 16 divided by 11 is 1 remainder 5. 25 divided by 11 is 2 remainder 3. 36 divided by 11, 3 remainder 3. 49 has a remainder of 5. 64 has a remainder of 9. 81, 77 plus 4, remainder of 4. 199 plus 1, that is a remainder of 1. 121, that's 11 squared. 144 is 1 more than 143, which is 11 times 13. So that's a remainder of 1. So having a look at these remainders, do you notice anything? we have a repeating pattern of numbers. So it goes 1, 4, 9, 5, 3, 3, 5, 9, 4, 1. So we kind of reverse the, the first five numbers and we go backwards. And then if we kept going, uh, that pattern will continue. So we get these five remainders here. 1, 4, 9, 5, and 3. And there's a theorem that says dividing, dividing any square by a prime, dividing any square by a prime, uh, an odd prime, I think, so anything greater than 2, uh, you get, I'm not, I'm not actually sure about that, you get p take 1 divided by 2 residues. So these are called, these remainders are called residues. So for example, if I divide a square by 13, I will get six numbers, numbers in the pattern. Okay, so here, over here we have five, that is 11 take one divided by two. So I know in fact that they are all of the remainders I will get when I'm dividing square numbers by 11. Uh, this, this theorem is the not so simple part of this, this proof. So therefore, looking at these remainders, 1, 4, 9, 5, and 3, I know I will never get a remainder of 10. Okay, so I will never have a remainder of 10, of 10 if I divide a square by 11. Therefore, y squared equals 11x plus 10 has no integer solutions. And so, by the way, this idea of looking at remainders, uh, in, a, in case you hadn't made that this connection already, is, is very much a part of, of what we call modular arithmetic. Uh, so, you know, that's clock arithmetic where you look at numbers not as the number itself, but how it relates to another number. Um, and this is a really important part of, of mathematics and mathematics research at the moment. And you can study equations like this and, and you're essentially at the forefront of mathematical research, you know, but people are studying these types of equations and trying to understand them. Um, and, and this is one way they're doing it, using this module arithmetic. Um, so there you go, that was just a, 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 an equation that I actually, 
I was just doodling and I wrote that down and I was like, huh, why aren't there any integer solutions to that? Um, and then I uh, sort of had to do a bit of research and found this, uh, this solution. Um, but yeah, does anyone else do that by the way? Just kind of doodle, maybe you're interested in mathematics or some other subject and you just end up writing something down and, and it sends you on a bit of a rabbit hole. Or is that just me? I don't know. Anyways, thanks for watching. Please leave a like if you found this video interesting and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.